What is up, guys? It's your boy Black Rue back with another video live. Um, before we get started, cue Indigo Saint. Let's get it. Indigo Saint in the building. Black Rue investing. Let's go. Misbeliever was black you invested With your money you ain't gotta be guessing Profits is what we manifested So we binge on a black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested Got course in this race we ain't resting We got stocks we got crypto with a blessing So thank God for that black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested My man Indigo, what's going on guys? Uh, let's switch What well, did you want to do? Say what again? I dare you, I double dare you um, this is the channel darkhorsewatcher.com leads you straight to my channel where you can like and subscribe and find out a lot of great information about cryptocurrency stocks and etc I don't know what's going on right now I think it's making me go into my YouTube studio even though I didn't exactly do that let me So www.darkhorsewatcher.com leads you straight to the channel where you can like and subscribe and get, again, like I said, nice contents on crypto and um, stocks. Today we're going to talk, is bull Bitcoin going to continue being bear, uh, bullish? And we're going to do a little bit of mini breakdown on CleanSpark. Because one of you guys asked me for that, so we'll do a little mini breakdown right quick. But before we get started into that, let me go in here, grab this, post it on Twitter. And we're good to go there. So let's go post this on Twitter and then I'll check and see who's in the house here. Live now. Boom. Bam. Done. Then let's go see who's over here. Where is it? Here. Boom. What is up, Manosphere Hall of Fame? Oh yeah, I, I, man, I was talking about that, man. I was talking about that. Uh, maybe the bottom has already been behind us in 2022. I know, I know. Um, besides me, only other person I know that was talking about that the bottom was in was CryptoVisor. Shout out to the CryptoVisor. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> what if the bottom was already in, right? I, 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 so, I totally agree with you. Um, but let's, let's actually check that out, shall we? Let's, let's start with that. Let's come over here and look at Bitcoin. So the only thing that gives me quite a little bit of hope that maybe we go lower is looking at where we were in 2019. Okay. So let's bring this up. I thought I had already had this up. That's okay. So here we are. Let me get rid of the extra indicators. We're on a day chart. Okay. So yeah, maybe, maybe FTX was the bottom, which was like 15 under 16 K. I got on here. I, t I was like, Hey guys, like maybe this is the bottom. I'm going to go grab some stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but if we look at this chart, like what <laughs> the eight AMA hasn't crossed the 50 in like since November, since November. So maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. Cause it, it looks dangerously like it's about to cross here on the day chart. So now here when only only thing that I think maybe it might not be the bottom 
let's come back here. So in 2020, we got a halving, right? And it, you, guys, you guys are going to have to excuse me. My mouse is just going crazy for whatever reason. And it went on DAG for some reason. I don't know why it did that. Sorry about that, guys. BTC. And we'll set an alert because I thought I had an alert set already, but apparently not. Exchange channel, we'll try to set it to something big here so it doesn't tweet on us here. Let's say 18.1 and let's go 16 eat or something like that. Okay. So let's get back to the Bitcoin chart. Okay. This is perfect. Okay. So basically in 2022, we were two years away from a halving. All right. So in 2022, we're two years away from having. So essentially, we were in 2018. All right. Let me just delete this line here. If it'll let me. Uh, delete trend line. Oh, this is so annoying. So let me try that one more time. There, okay. So we're essentially in 2018 when we're in um, 2022, okay? Because we were two years away from a halving. Here we were two years away. Now in 2022, we were two years away. We hit... I'm so sorry, guys. Please be patient with me here. Uh, we hit the top of the market here. In 20 and around 2017, 2018, we hit the bottom of the market here. Both two years away, like from the halving, right? So now here in 2019, we hit when we hit the 10k mark. That's the next question we get. Now, I'm not certain. But if, if it's mirroring the same way it did here with the 2018 part in 2022, then maybe we actually hit that point. And um, Richard Hart was one of the only guys who, to me, made a good case for it possibly getting down that low. And the case he made was, hey, look, Celsius coins haven't been sold yet. Voyager coins haven't been sold yet. So that selling pressure, the ETH haven't, hasn't been sold yet from um, the ETH um, staking, which uh, CryptoNeek, shout out to CryptoNeek, made that point in the last uh, live stream we were in. So perhaps getting down to the 10K mark, perhaps that's in the future. Perhaps that's in the cards. But... Maybe it's more towards the March time frame where um, the Shanghai um, Ethereum um, update gets dropped and people unstake their Ethereum and sell some of it. Maybe it's towards that time. Who knows? But um, yeah, maybe maybe we, we've already seen the bottom. But even here at 17, <laughs> like... You really still have to say it's a it's a fantastic price on a lot of the coins that you know we've seen. Like if I go over here and since it kept coming up, let's look at DAG, right? Okay, now my mouse doesn't want to bring it up. Okay, this is just a this is just so frustrating. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, there we go, DAG. So if we we zoom in on DAG. With DAG, we literally haven't seen the 8 AMA cross since 
We literally haven't seen the AMA cross the 50 since October. That was like four months ago. It's crazy. And supposedly they have some big news coming up. And um, LCX, Big Boy just did a video on LCX. It was a short little video, but Davos is also meeting, um, I believe, next week. So LCX is coming to a fray. And the eight is crossed the 50 there. All right, let's see who's in the house over here. Hopefully some people are in the house after me dealing with these mouse issues. Okay. All right, and if you guys have any questions, definitely bring the questions on, right? So for me, it seems a little fool's goalie. Like, it seems a little fool's goalie. Um, like, like I said, if you flash back to 2019, there was more dropping that happened. And I, I'm sure... I'm sure people thought their the dropping was over and then there had a you know a drop here. I'm not saying we get like a catastrophic drop like that, but I think there may be some more dropping before it actually we actually get there. But um this sure feels nice, right? <laughs> Especially after having a whole FTX deal go on and so many things happen. I'm just trying to move my mouse over, y'all. And it's just not happening. Okay. So, like, okay, if I was to give it, like, some points, some points to watch, right? Let's try to come in here and watch some points. Okay, so we got our GAN fan here, right? We're armed with our GAN fan. Let's go, let's go in and get a little deeper into this. So, it touched the GAN fan here. So, that's a resistance point. This one right here. It went above that. Now, <laughs> do we expect it to go all the way up to 19? That, that could be. That could be. But let's just see where it goes if it really breaks this point and doesn't come back down. So right here, I guess we're looking for it to pass um, 17.6. If it can pass 17.6, then we can possibly safely say it broke at least that resistance, that GAN fan resistance. Coincidentally enough, that would also mean that, it, that the 8 AMA went over the 50 AMA, okay? Um, which is like a little bullish, um, a little bullish signal. Now let's dive deeper into the four hour and see where it's at. Okay, look at that on the four hour. So on the four hour, it's even more bullish because not only did the eight break, and this is this is why this is why I added the eight AMA. Because the 8 AMA just shows you like bullish info before everything else. Like the fact that the 8 crossed the 50 here, you could say it was bullish in January 4th if you wanted to say that. Um, but now the 50 has crossed the 200 on the 4 hour. And the last time the 50 crossed the 200 was... Gosh, December for a hot second. And then we got to go all the way back again to October, um, November, the whole L, um, FTX debacle. But you can see here the 50 is crossed the 200, which is actually called known as the Golden Cross. So um, on the four hour, you could say it's pretty, it's, quote unquote, if you use the golden cross as a rule, it's bullish on the four hour. 
and um, according to the four hour, the next, the next um, resistance, according to the GAN fan, is a right at, I guess, seventeen eight, which is what we said before. I think I guess we said seventeen six with the day chart, but let's say seventeen eight here with the four hour, right? So that would be the next point. If it crosses 17.8, then maybe we got something good here. But as far as the four hour goes, it, it's a really bullish signal that um, it crossed, that the 50 crossed the 200, okay? So there's that. But to me, it feels, it feels a bit like fool's gold. It feels a bit like it feels a little bit like a bull trap. Coincidentally, also, if we're using other signs, um, the on the Gantt chart, it's it's kind of reaching this little curve here, right? And you notice kind of on the curves here that they pull back. And also here um, on the RSI, it's reached oversold um, or overbought, excuse me. I always say those are on. It was reached overbought, so actually on the four hour, it should be cooling down now because it's overbought and it's overbought here. However, again, this 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 is bullish. The golden cross here. Um, let's look at the day chart again. Let's go back up and see how that looks. Yeah, so not quite oversold on the day chart is not quite there but you know one could say it is it's very close to there so if we look at the last past couple times it didn't reach oversold only on march did it reach oversold and actually come back lately it's, it stopped just short of that on the day chart so you could look at this and say, okay, it's so it's very close to oversold. It's inconclusive. Um, but uh, looking here, looking here, that's that's a that's a lot of bullish. <laughs> There's a lot of bullish. So you would you would think that it would be coming back after being that bullish. So so of all the of all the signs that we've we've looked at, I guess there's actually more signs to say that it would come back than it would keep going because near oversold pretty much like way near time to kind of come back down here on the Wyckoff. Um, again, dropping down to the four hour, we saw some of the same things as far as the RSI and the Wyckoff are concerned. Um, the only thing that is bullish is this point, but at least again, we have a point to look at, which is, where was it? 17.8. I know we don't usually go that deep with the chart, but that's something to look at. Um, those are the, oh, those are the ones, those are the indicators that I use and that I like, um, maybe someone else like could do like a Fibonacci if they want to, but I, I'm not. I'm not too up on the Fibonacci or like that, but um, you know these these are the indicators that work for me. Um, of course, not financial advice. Um, I'm just sharing with you guys um, what how I'm trading. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, let's go back to the chat. What's good, Ace? What's going on, homie? <laughs> yes, bird dog. I'm fading this rally. Uh, what's up? Uh, it's relaxing serenity sounds. I I'm feeling. I'm kind of feeling where you at, bird dog. It feels really, really um, trappish to me. It's feeling really bull trappish to me. Now. Um, some really great stuff. You remember, guys, I've been telling you guys about CleanSpark for quite a while. And um, 
Aaron, and you also remember, guys, I said this a couple of days ago that the stocks were actually a little bit bullish before the actual crypto was. So that's another, I think, hint that we can take for the future. Um, maybe the stocks show us a little bit of a um, premonition of the future of where the market, the crypto market is actually heading. Um, Clean Spark, we've been talking about it for a while now, but we were talking about it when it was down at a dollar seventy, so dollar seventy five. So that's sitting at two fifty. That's almost like what a forty percent gain there, which is a happy time, a happy time for a lot of people, and a lot of people would sell at that point, right? But um, what we're actually looking for CleanSpark to do is be back here when Bitcoin was this bullish, right? So even still, even though we've seen a 40% gain, this is still a great looking chart and we still expect it to come somewhere back here. So, you know, make the decision for yourselves if you want to like, cut out with 40% gains or if you want to hold for here this is this is your decision I, I know what I'm deciding here though um, and if we were just to come and compare and look at Bitcoin right quick I think we can yeah we can just do it here on Benzinga Pro so Bitcoin I just typed it in. It didn't. Okay, we'll do it here. So if we look for it, look at it in the last in two years, I think that's where we were. So, so wow, yeah. So let's go back. So two years ago basically up and around here at 64 and 65 of Bitcoin clean spark was $40 so that's what we're expecting from clean spark and you can see it runs kind of right in line with um, Bitcoin so Two years ago, boom, that's that's where it was. So I know it's a 40% gain, but we got we got some more we got some more to go, right? Now, um, some some a uh, user asked me, could I talk about uh, Clean Spark and exactly kind of what what's in it for Clean Spark? Why I'm so heavy on it? So one thing. It's a Bitcoin miner, but it's not just a Bitcoin miner. It also does stuff in green energy. It has a microgrids um, section. And basically a microgrid is, um, and we can kind of just, I guess, look it up here. Microgrids. It's technology like, so say if I bought a house off the grid somewhere, right? I would have a company come in and install a microgrid. And here it is. Microgrid is a local electrical grid with defined electrical boundaries acting as a single controllable entity. Um, is able to operate in grid connected, in, is able to operate in grid connected and in island mode. So basically if I'm not you know, connected to a power grid, I would have someone install a microgrid at my house and it would basically regulate the power I had between like my clean power, like a solar solar energy, um, you know, wind power um, and my battery and then how much energy I expand in my house, expend in my house. So the microgrid is a micro grid it's a grid just for my house 
so that um, it can regulate energy in my house. I don't spend, I don't expend any more green energy than I have to. Um, it makes sure that all my batteries are charged the way they need to be charged. So not only does CleanSpark mine Bitcoin, they also are in the microgrid technology sector for clean, for clean energy. And they use these microgrids to mine and regulate the power that they use to mine Bitcoin. So that's what really separates it from other companies. And it really shows you that they're kind of doing mining better than everyone else um, because they're mining things in a low carbon type of way. Now, if we go down, um, you'll be able to see some of this with the um, Benzinga description. Offer software and intelligent controls for microgrid and distributed energy resource management. Says it right there. Um, its software is capable of um, enabling a microgrid to be scaled to user specific needs, can be widely implemented across commercial, industrial, and military, agricultural, and municipal deployment. Its company's operating segment includes energy and digital um, agency. It generates maximum revenue from digital currency segment. So they're more focused on Bitcoin mining, but they also have that clean energy segment. Now, if we come over here, and we look at it and you can see it. They, they tell you right here. Um, we strive to leave the planet better than we found it by sourcing and investing in low carbon energy. So that's a that's an easier way for them to say, okay, we mine Bitcoin with microgrids. They can just say, okay, we do it in a low carbon energy way. So I I kind of bet my bottom dollar that these guys, you know, again, not financial advice. This is just my kind of my hunch. Um, they are mining Bitcoin in a lower energy way than everyone else is doing it. So that puts them in a better position financially, okay, by mining their Bitcoin. Now, if we come over here, we can make some quick comparisons. So if we come over here to overview... And we go down here. Um, ooh, my mouse is really fighting against me today. Okay, so we go down here and we say we want to look at their end of the year kind of Bitcoin mining update. So been a credible year for them. If we come down here and look at it, they mined 460 something Bitcoin in December. Let's do a little comparison here. Let's go grab Hut. There's. One hundred sixty-one mined in December, so they're blowing HUD out of the water. Um, Hundred percent of their Bitcoin added to the balance sheet, increasing reserves by sixty-five percent in twenty twenty-two to whatever Bitcoin they have. So. That's that. There's that's that. Let's go to Clean Spark here. One of the things you find by Clean Spark is they just bought a facility in this market where a lot of miners, including Core Core Scientific, are like on the verge of going bankrupt or went bankrupt. Cores went bankrupt. They 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 filed for bankruptcy. Whereas Clean Spark, they they've increased their annual production by two hundred percent. And like I've told you guys in other shows, 
they actually just bought a facility like a month or two ago. Um, so they're doing just they're just doing very financially well right now. Um, let me show you the information. Oops, sorry, I don't know why my mouse is going so crazy today, but it is. So it's just bear with me. Um, let's go press releases here. Okay, let's close this one. So if we scroll down, you can tell. So, so this is the one that they bought. And if we go down just a little bit, you can see. Mawson Infrastructure Group announces completion of previously announced sale of its Sanderville, Georgia facility and it's like 6,500 uh, A6 to clean spark for 40 million. So they're out here buying things where like other people are going bankrupt. You know, Coors went bankrupt. Coors went bankrupt, um, but if you look into their December update, they mined a lot of Bitcoin. I think they mined the most Bitcoin of any miner out there um so this might be one of the ones you want to like look at but understand they just declared bankruptcy but um if we come down here they mined a thousand three hundred and fifty six and one thousand four hundred and thirty five bitcoin in november and december that's like three times the amount that clean spark is mining right but, um, you know, Clean Spark isn't bankrupt and uh, they just bought a new facility. So um, you have to judge for yourself if you want to get into this because they declare bankruptcy. They're on the OTC now. They're not, you know, if you think they'll survive, that may be a rare, really great deal to get into cores if you want. Um, at eight cent could possibly go to 14 cent. That's that's up to you. But I like Clean Spark because they're they're um they they're not going bank they're not going bankrupt, um as far as we know, they just bought a facility, and they're killing in the mining game, plus they're doing the mining in a very efficient, very clean way with low carbon energy. Um, if you look at any of the other ones, they can't make that claim because they're not doing it like Clean Spark's doing it. They don't have a microgrid, and they're not they're not doing it that way. So Clean Sparks one of the only ones that's doing it in that type of way. So this is why I like these guys a whole lot. Um, so that's just like a mini breakdown on this miner. Um, and we kind of compared them to Coors and Hut really quickly. So we can see they're kind of killing the game. Um, maybe we can look at one other one if we can find it and see. Uh, how they compare to it, I guess, uh, Estig or Riot. Let's see, Riot. Maybe they have theirs. Production and operation updates. So, okay, they just, they produce just a little bit under, um, under um, or just a little bit over uh, uh, over Clean Spark, but mind you, Clean Spark just developed uh, just bought a new facility. So I still I still like Clean Spark better than Riot at this point, but there's a reason why uh, Riot's here over Clean Spark because Riot's pro producing more at the moment. And if you look at their earnings, Riot's earning more at the moment. But I think Clean Spark's the better play personally. But, um, you know, Riot's another one that you can look at in that area, along with uh, Mara. But um, we, were, we, won't, we won't go too deep into those unless you guys want me to today. But that's the breakdown that I promised. And um, I hope whoever asked and requested for that will see this in the recording 
or see it um, see it live. What's up, Pavan Garu One? What's up, Mark Gutier? So this all coin rally, any chance all coins go back to lower prices? Is that it? Gala pumped crazy. Sorry, I'm late to stream. No problem. Um, my house runs on bald eagle oil, one eagle per day. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I love Regan. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> um, so this all coin rally, any chance that they go back to lower prices is that it got to pump crazy. I mean, you never can tell, you never can know. Um, just like I said uh, earlier, and I, I and you're a little late, so we can go over it just a little bit. Um, again, um, the price to watch might be the uh, seventeen point eight. If it passes that, um, then maybe it can go further. I feel, and like my guy Bird Dog put in the uh, chat as well, I feel like this is very bull trappy. It feels like a trap, like they're only bringing it up to just bring it down a little bit lower. Um, we're so far away from a Bitcoin halving. The Bitcoin halving doesn't happen until um, like May or April of 2024. So the market has a lot of a lot of stuff to do before we even get there. That's a little bit more than a year away, right? Like 15 months away or something like that. So it's very well that it could go lower. And um, again, if you look at the chart, I'm not gonna go back too far about, about it, but um, cause, cause my mouse has been giving me trouble. But if you look at the chart and you go back in 2019, which was one year away from the halving, we were at a 10K Bitcoin. So it's quite possibly that we can get there again because there's other things that need to happen as far as selling pressure, as far as like the Ethereum um, Shanghai um, upgrade, which will allow people to unstake their Ethereum. People might sell after they unstake it. Um, if Binance is allowed to buy Voyager, of course the SEC put that on hold. I'm not sure if you guys were aware of that, but um, Binance buying Voyager is on hold because the SEC and Gary Gensler with his scamming um, behind um, put it on hold. Um, Binance, Voyager. Voyager. Buy on hold. So, that selling pressure is not going to happen at this point, but somebody's going to buy it at some point. Okay, there's an update on that. So, it had been put on hold. So, SEC pushes deal back. So, they, they put it on hold, but now it seems like there's a little update. Judge allows... Binance bid to buy. Let's see. Let's see what the judge says on this, I guess. Okay, so the judge is allowing it to advance after the SEC and their shysty selves put it on hold. So, da, 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 da. okay, it looks like it's advancing. Okay, that's good to that's good to hear. So that's another thing that could possibly put selling pressure because I think I know some people personally here that had money in Voyager. And as soon as Binance buys that and makes these guys whole, I'm sure people will be like, "I'm selling. I'm I'm taking my money and running." Right? Uh, maybe they put it like half of it into some crypto assets. And they don't sell it all and just take it and done. But that's some more selling pressure that can come to the market. 
Um, the Celsius tokens haven't been sold. And if anybody gets anything back from FTX, those haven't been sold. So there's some things that could have some selling pressure on the market. And again, the Ethereum unstaking. So there is a chance that things can go lower at this point. But again, I ask you though, like even looking at altcoins at this price right now, aren't you getting a, a deal? Um, so it, it's, it's really up to you. Right now, personally, what I'm doing, I don't know. I might, I might, um, I might wait on certain things. Um, where were we here? There it is. I might, I might wait on certain things. Cer certain things might be too hot right now. Um, certain things might be too hot right now. But my, 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 my lean, if I was going to lean anyway, of course, not financial advice. Do your own investing. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, my lean is that this is a fake rally and that it's, it's going to come down at some point. Very soon. Um, so that's, that's how I feel about that. What's up, Gomes? I'm waiting for a higher BTC. If 20 plus happens, I'm shorting. I got you. I ooh, I just hate I hate shorting. I don't know how how you guys feel about shorting, but um, I'm not fond of it. I'm not fond of it. Hey, Tammy Black, I know that that person. <laughs> um, Gomes. Um, Voyager up 15%. Okay, yeah, so maybe I got wrecked with Voyager uh, down 12K down the twos with those guys. What's up? Mainly music in the house. Black Roo investing royalty over here. HBAR. Um, HBAR is one of those coins that I'm very high on for the long term. Like HBAR, Stellar. XDC and XRP are going to be the future of banking, guys. Um, love to get some down there, right? But really, like, and this is like Coinbase. So this is like the worst one to have up. Sorry, guys. Um, buh, 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 buh. Binance has probably been around for a while. With HBAR. So if you look at, okay, this is the four hour. That's that, that would explain it. If you look at the day chart on this guy. We're still getting it down there as opposed to up here, right? And if it does the stuff that it's, is supposed to do in banking, right? You're still way down here. <laughs> and there's no reason to believe that it won't do the things that it's, it's, it's going to do in, in banking. Like we, we just we just did a cursory search. Just 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 couple word search. IBM and Hedera. And you can come in here and look and see that. Hedera is um, working with IBM. Working with IBM here to create um, like so much, so much stuff, so much stuff. Um, even, even more um, uh, stellar. So, but you can see here, IBM uh, platform and Hedera are blending the world of private and public ledgers. This is from Hedera. Um, so, it's it's we're we're getting a such a different such a discount here, and um, I don't want to bring up my hash graph for y'all my um, hash pack wallet, but you can stake on there. 
as well. So um, there's that too. So um, again, and if we look at Stellar, you just do a quick little search here. And we did it a couple days ago, but we can do it again here. Stellar IBM. You'll get to see that IBM's already using Stellar in its, its, um, in its blockchain technology. IBM's blockchain implements the use of Stellar and Stars Network and digital asset on the Hyperledger to carry out transactions. Already, already it's known. Already it's known. They're, they're using it for cross-border um, transactions and cross-border payments already. And let's not even get into um, Ripple, X, X, um, XRP, and how many uh, banks are using it, right? So try not to get too lost in the sauce of the fact that, yeah, we are up like 15%, but... <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, we're still way like we're it's still a bargain. It's still a like a major bargain. So the dollar cost average at this point, you can't really even get mad at yourself because this is what you're looking at. And understand that Hedera did this without having its DeFi available, which it does have now. Without being connect like really in with IBM and all of these banks, right? So, so yeah, so just just really understand that when um, that you're when you're looking at these guys, and you're looking at stuff like Stellar, um, and stuff like um, XLM, right? Stuff like Ripple, we're 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 still real early to the game, guys. Real early to the game. Um, let's see here. Stellar, I think, has been on Coinbase for a while. So this one should be. Really? Only since April? Okay. Um, KuCoin, then? Okay, there we go. So, again, look at Stellar. 80 cents. See in here at seven, right? And then go back to the other bull run. Almost 40 cents, right? And we're sitting down here at seven, y'all. 7.8, it did, Stellar actually didn't move as much as a lot of coins did. Cause I know it was just sitting at like 7.3, 7.1, 7.2. So it didn't really move that much yet. Oh, I said, um, mainly I said HBAR, uh, XRP, and um, Stellar, which is uh, XLM. Oh, yeah, Mark, uh, Mark Gutierrez, yes, Quant2, Quant2. Yeah, and I also said XDC. Yep, Quant2, Quant2. Quant Quant uh, and the reason why Quant's so cool is because it's going to be like the operating system between um, CBDCs. And um, you guys know the connector, right? Um, LCX. So BitBoy finally decided to hop on the uh, LCX trail this week. Um, he, he made a video on uh, LCX and everybody was going gaga. Um, but we've been talking about it for quite a while around here. Um, so I'm just going to toot my own horn on that. Not going to be bashful about that. <laughs> um, but if we come over here and look, LCX already knows Quant's going to be like that deal with CBDCs. And that's why they've decided to get a partnership with Quant. And oh, good old LCX, we haven't done this in a while. Let me go ahead and just bring it up for you guys so you know. If you don't know about LCX and the fact that they're members of the World Economic Forum, let's show you right quick. 
So um, Monty Metzger. And there's a whole other backstory where Monty and uh, CZ has beef because um, LCX was supposed to be LCX Binance. But that's a whole other story. We won't even get into that right now, but come down here. This is the LCX's CEO, by the way, as you can see from the top there. Uh, we will just close that and we'll close that. Um, now, if we go all the way down here, you will see member World Economic Forum. LCX joins the World Economic Forum. Oh, by the way, Ripple is also a member of the World Economic Forum. So, so these banks, are, these these things are going to be heavy in with bank coins, LCX, Quant, um, Stellar, which we just showed you how IBM's already using them to bridge currencies, um, like these guys are are getting stuff done right now, and guys, if you guys don't know it, we we have a liquidity problem. <laughs> There's a reason why the banks only let you get a certain amount of money out now and it keeps lowering. You don't have it. Like if people tried to go get all their money out, they, they wouldn't have it for you. They don't have enough liquidity. They, they, they know it's a problem and it seems to me that they're kind of killing off the dollar purposely at this point because um, the most money in the last, what is it? The last eight, two years, they parented like 80% of the supply. Um, let's see. Or, well, what, say, say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. Some places say 80, some places say 60, and they're still printing. So it's like, okay, who do you go with? But whether it be 50, 80, or whatever, most of the money's been printed in the last past two years. And crypto's quietly getting set up in all these different countries kind of except America. So it, it's ha it's happening. 80% of the US dollars in existence has been printed in just last two years. They say 40, they say 80. They say 80 in the last 22 months. That was in December of 2021. So don't really want to hold on to those dollars. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not, they're just not, 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 not the best deal. And of course we've been over this too. Um, central banks are buying up gold. If you weren't aware of that. Central bank gold buying continues in November as China joins the foray. Here's why so many central banks are buying gold. Um, you can see it right there. Fastest pace in 55 years. So that's why I'm kind of investing heavy in those coins like we just mentioned there. Fly Pango Pan Pan Go Pan I I'm saying that wrong. So somebody can tell me how to say it. I think it's Pangolin. Uh, how to say that correctly? Um, it's adding the H bar chain to its exchange. Nice. Just saw the update. Pangolin now has Avax, Songbird, and now H bar cross chain interoperability. Maybe some great staking options for HBAR coming. Uh, what will be your price prediction for these ones, uh, Ruel? Um, I try to stay away from price pred predictions, but I can, I can kind of give you a, a guesstimate. Again, you, I'm not a financial advisor, but I can, I can give it to you. Um, so they dropped immediately in the price. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Like it was crazy, crazy. Um, ALB2, yep, 
Yep, Alliance Block too. Alliance Block is getting pretty heavy in with some people. And um, shout out to my guy, um, the Tokenizer. Um, definitely go check out his channel, guys, if you haven't already. Um, he did a really nice breakdown on the Energy Web Token. Um, it seems to be connecting in with a lot of this too. And of course, you guys know that the World Economic Forum, they're heavy on climate change. And um, apparently, Energy Web Token has some things going on with Ripple and um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a um, tokenizer on here uh, sometime soon and uh, we'll be doing a breakdown that you guys can come and listen to. But um, shout out to the tokenizer. You might want to check out his breakdown on it on his channel. And um, it's token nicer, like nice. Um, let me see if I can just bring up his Twitter right quick so you guys know where you can go to follow him. Um, try to represent my guys like Bird Dog. Bird Dog is also on, on YouTube. Check out Bird Dog on YouTube. Uh, me and Bird Dog did a um, collaboration as well. token nicer so check him out he does some good work so is my guy bird dog over there um now where were we okay energy web token but before we get on energy web token let's let's look at where these prices can go um so <laughs> Uh, Ripple. I think the best way to look at Ripple will probably be to go over here to Coin Market Cap. Um, where is Coin Market Cap? There we go. So it was as high as three dollars. I'm not sure when the whole SEC case happened, but I think it was somewhere around here. Um, There have been people, and let me see if I can find that. That um, There have been people that said that, like, XRP, since they think it might be the world's reserve currency sometime soon, that it could reach, like, astronomical prices. And uh, mainly, I know you're kind of, like, you're, you're a dude that knows stuff about stuff. Um, maybe you could say... <laughs> <laughs> up something about that but um certain people have said like maybe xrp goes to ten dollars or twenty dollars after the case right um i have reason to believe maybe that may be the case again not financial advisor i'm not i'm only telling you guys what i'm what what information i've researched um Reason why uh, people think that is because Brad Gehringhouse has said after the SEC case that they're going to go public, um, that Ripple, the company, is going to go public. And um, there's also uh, thought to believe that people, central banks would have to go buy up Ripple from Ripple holders if it became like a world reserve currency. Um, and I did a little breakdown about that yesterday, but I'll try to give you guys the quick points. But um, you might you might want to check out the video yesterday, but I, I'll give you some quick points on it. So there is a currency called XDR. It's like <clears throat> the world reserve currency. I think it's like the currency. And again, uh, mainly you might mo know more, a little bit know more about this than I do. Um, it's like the currency they use between central bank currencies, um, between central banks. Um, generally, it's, um, it's just digital, but um, there are images here where you can see it like people obviously like their, their records like it's, it's traded back and forth. But apparently some people if they get special permission from the IMF, they can get a hold of it in some type of form. Um, 
but there's a conversion here for all world currencies, right? And I guess the thought is if you get Ripple and it becomes a world currency that now central banks have to come buy it from Ripple holders so that um, they can use it to transact money between themselves. Or, and they don't want to be left behind because Ripple um, on demand, Ripple on demand liquidity is um, near instantaneous. Um, if they're using the SWIFT system, it could take days, right? Um, and you don't want to be the person that's left behind um, because, like we like we said before, it, it takes um, it takes like seconds with Ripple on demand. So let me give you guys a little bit of the, an example here. So right now they've been starting with. They've been starting with instant payments, okay? Um, and in order to do that, you need to have XRP. So you can see it here. By utilizing XRP, a digital asset ideal for payments, Ripple's on-demand liquidity, because remember I told you, places are having, like banks are having a liquidity problem. But in comes Ripple, you got on-demand liquidity. Um, by utilizing X XRP, you can do it near instantaneously across borders. So they're getting big with the whole central bank of Brazil, these like BRICS countries, right? Um, these emerging countries. Um, in an area that's like 780 billion payments annually in Brazil. And if you look at it, like Ripple's so connected with so many banks, guys, like, it would just take us the entire like night just to talk about how many banks that they're connected with. Um, so Ripple seems to have the biggest upside. Um, and there was a hedge fund manager. You guys will have to look him up because I can't. I, I and, and check out my price prediction or check out my uh, show from yesterday because or, or day before yesterday we went over what Jimmy Valley said. And um, Jimmy Valley is a big dude out here. He's a um, CEO of a hedge fund. Okay, here here's the art. Here's like a kind of quick article of it. He basically believes that if the central bank buys it back, that you got you can go from a price tag of 10 10 k to thirty five k ripple which is insane, but when he makes his case, it doesn't sound too far off. It really doesn't sound too far off. So he, he since he since bag back on this. It's not 35 to, to 50 anymore, he says. He says 10K to 35. Um, now understand there's like a reason why he says this and I can't get into all of it today because I got that information is not pulled up anymore. Um, but give Jimmy Valley a, a, a listen. Um, he's a dude that really follows this whole case well. He's been deep in the whole XRP community for like years, years, years. Um, hedge fund guy um, with his own, you know, like venture capitalist guy. Um, Give him a listen and like it'll make a little bit more sense in that case. Um, Hedera and um, Stellar, you got to believe maybe at least a dollar, at least a dollar, right? But if they're doing some of the same things that um, XRP is doing, who knows? Who knows, right? But um, yeah. I, I have to believe the first the first place we start though, like XRP, it's in a class by itself. But the first place we start with coins like Stellar, is we could we could see um, 
it go over a dollar this this um this bull run i definitely think that happens it's been testing it a couple times but um i think we see everything go over a dollar and i can tell you why for that in just a second as well i hate doing price prediction stuff um but i i, I can tell you why i believe that in just a second because nobody knows, but I can give you at least, that's why I hate to do the price prediction stuff, but I can at least give you things that I look at to say, okay, maybe, maybe, possibly. Um, Stellar is taking forever. So the reason that I think Stellar could probably get over a dollar is, so Bitcoin, every halving, we see it go kind of like 3X past where it was before. So 2017, it was at like 17K. 2020, 21, it was at 64, 68K, right? So maybe 2024, we see 250K Bitcoin, possibly, maybe. And if that's the case, then maybe we see Stellar, which 70 cents last bull run, almost 70 since this last bull run too. So maybe Stellar goes into a dollar. This next up and coming bull run. Um, the last bull run um, seems like IBM was just getting into using it for cross-border payments, but now IBM is actually using it. Maybe it's more of a reason for it to get past, um, past, um, you know, past a dollar. And uh, same thing goes for Hedera. Again, they didn't even have their DeFi up and running at this point last bull run, but they do now. Um, a lot of reason to believe that it'll get past the dollar itself. Um, only other one I think I left out was Algorand because they're doing big things also in the banking space. Um, it's already been up as far as like $2, maybe it gets to three, but that's, that's that's about it for price predictions for me. Might be a good replacement for Swift, but I'm more interested in what will be used for daily uses by the general public. Pretty cool. Okay. Okay. I like to hear that uh, mainly. Let's see if we missed some stuff up here. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm not, I'm not buying Quant. The token price is too high for me at a point. After a point, it won't have any, uh, retail involvement. I like getting, uh, HBAR and LCX as they still will be open to, uh, retail speculation. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Like, um, I can totally see why you would go for HBAR and LCX, um, When you get comfortable, though, I wouldn't I wouldn't count out quant if it gets lower at some point. But if you want to go for those two first, I totally understand where you're, where you're at with that. Um, quant to me, and like we just kind of went through, uh, we just went how we just showed you how LCX is truly thinking that they're going to accelerate CBDCs. And the LCX is really believing in them doing interoperability for the financial services sector. Like, they're, they're spelling it right out here for you. Quant is developer and pro provider of the blockchain operating system. Remember, I said it was operating system that connects blockchains and legacy networks. So just like Alliance Block is trying to do that, Quant is also trying to do that, and Quant might be further along in that than um, Alliance Block actually is. So, um, but but let's keep going here. Um, and and in fact, Alliance Block is a partner of uh, Quant, by the way. But anyways, let's keep going. Um, Quant is a developer and provider of blockchain operating system that connects blockchain and legacy networks and systems to um, the blockchain known as Overledger. And 
is the issuer of the token quant, which will give access to the Overledger platform. So you can't use Overledger without having quant. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, we aim to utilize this partnership with LTX to demonstrate immense value of interoperability for the financial services sector. We will combine and interconnect different blockchains to unlock value um, for our users and provide additional value to the fast growing LCX ecosystem. So LCX is definitely gonna be a player with these bank coins as well. So Bitcoin, BitBoy is right when he says hidden bank token for LCX. I just don't agree with him saying that it's like the XRP of Europe that that that's like a crazy statement to me i don't think that they're trying to do the exact same thing like this is an exchange lcx or um ripple is not an exchange i don't know like that it's it's weird how he phrased that part um yeah but let's let's look at quant right quick So, would have loved some $40 quant, right? Would have loved some $40 quant over here, right? But right now, the, I, I, I guess, like, really the best, like, if you see under $100 quant, that might be actually pretty good right now, <laughs> seeing as how, where, where quant's been, like, if you if you if you're over a hundred dollars with coin right now, or if you, if it gets to a, under a hundred dollars, that might be a time to just soak up one. Um, but other than that, but but just just understand they have to use quant in order to use the overledger, and there's only fourteen point six million of them. Okay, pretty much. So. It was as high as $400. It's only really seen one bull run. Man, like these these are definitely one of those coins that I can see does like a, a triple along with Bitcoin. Whereas like if Bitcoin goes to 250K, then I, I, I seriously do think that this one goes to over a thousand. Seriously do think that. Um, not financial advice. Um, Whichever one Amazon chooses is who I'll roll with. I feel you on that one. Oh, my audio is going in and out. Okay, let me um, get rid of some of these. Um, some of these windows. Hopefully, without cutting us off. Okay, we're live streaming there, so I can get rid of this one. This one. This one, okay. Okay, I think that's enough. And I will get rid of this one. Close all. Okay, this should be enough that we're like not. Okay, so that should be enough where we're good to go. Ooh, one year and 10 years on Bitcoin. So honestly, I really think we get like 250, 250K Bitcoin. Um, but I do, con I do think we continue this like four cycle thing. Um, well, actually, okay. Let's, let's look at Bitcoin right quick. So let's go back. Um, so here's one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. So when it halved back here in um, May of 2016, 
it took something like 18 months for it to go bullish, right? Um, so May, we got all the way over here to like June 2017. So that's like 13 months, something like 13 months for it to go bullish, right? We come over here, it has somewhere around May 2020. It took no, November, so that's like six months. So it went from about 12, 13 to six here. So the next bull run, does it only take three months for it to start rolling? Because it only took six here. Or does it go a month? Or does it start going before the having? Just keep that in mind. It, it's, it's speeding. It the cycles are kind of speeding up in, in a certain sense. So if it took only six months here, when it took like twelve back there, and maybe this next bull run, it only takes three months for it to go bullish, and then we get two fifty k Bitcoin. And then it goes back down to like 60K or something like that. Um, in that next little bear cycle, which would be what? Um, 2026, something like that. Because um, we were basically kind of bullish for like a year and a half here. So 2026 bearish goes down to either like 100K or 64K or something like that. And then we get, what, what would that be? 2028, we get like a 75K Bitcoin. Um, it goes back down, but this time it only goes down to like maybe 100K or 50, like a half a million. And then we get that finally get that million Bitcoin in 2032, 2032. So million Bitcoin, million Bitcoin either in 2032 or possibly somewhere in 2028, 2029, right? So that's, that's kind of, the way to look at it right there that's 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 my that's my like at least how many years is that that's 10 years right that's that's about 10 years that's my 10 year horizon right there bam um bu -bu 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 -bu. Okay, let me see. I missed a, a lot of comments. No Ada? Well, Ada is so funny about Ada. Um, Gemini doesn't sell Ada, but the LCX exchange has Ada listed. So I don't know where you want to go with that, but apparently the World Economic Forum believes in Ada. They believe in Ada, but uh, Gemini doesn't. So World Economic Forum seems to be cool with Ada, even though Charles kind of downs them sometimes. That, that's 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 something. Cosmos, I I, I like Cosmos. I like Cosmos, um, and apparently so does this Ethereum guy. What did he say? So CoinDesk came out with this, and it's it's an Ethereum maximalist. So. How do I know he's an Ethereum maximalist? Because he did some work for Coin Consensus, and quiet as is kept, Consensus are um, J.P. Morgan backed, and J.P. Morgan kind of kind of is pushing uh, Ethereum at this point. So, so while you plan strictly, if you're if you're looking for the coin that like 
Amazon might go with, <laughs> then you might be looking for Ethereum then. Because JP Morgan, Amazon, you know, those type of people, you might be looking for Ethereum then. Um, so this guy, again, he was global head of business development for Consensus. And they pretty much own Ethereum more or less they, they they do a lot of work for ethereum so um if we go down here not only is he gaga over filecoin right he's also cosmic about cosmos cosmos gets interesting as developers and users seek more customization app chains will also go live on ethereum so everything he says, he brings it back to Ethereum, even if he like gives kudos to some other chain. Um, in 2023, um, Cosmos Vision will finally find mass adoption. Cosmos is not, not a blockchain, but a galaxy of interconnected chains. And we know that because of the standard, which he's gonna mention, important, Importantly, all of the chains employ the inter-blockchain communication IBC standard, which is way better than what uh, Polkadot has going on with the substrate. With the um, IBC standard, they actually do have some real communication, the, the blockchains do, um, together. A technology designed to mimic the early innovations of the TCIP layer and Web2 um, for nefarious hackers Bridges have represented the most lucrative attack vector. Um, totaling blah, 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 blah. Having a standard of communication layer just makes sense. Now, he makes a very good point there. I missed this before. Um, bridges have represented a very lucrative attack vector. That's why uh, Quant is actually like one of the best solutions because um, it's gonna do an operating system more like an interconnectability um, between CBDCs instead of actually having bridges. So, so what he's saying is with um, this TCP IP kind of mimicking of the inner blockchain communication standard, it's actually better than bridges and reduces the attack vectors that um, hackers can have to come in and attack these blockchains. So that's very cool. Actually, what he just said there. Um, moreover, as blockchains have matured in application, developers will be forced to welcome and own more of the blockchain stack. Okay, and he's gonna get into some more stuff and probably bring it back to Ethereum. Okay, so he's, he's high on Cosmos. I'm pretty high on Cosmos. And if you go over to, um, and I've showed you guys this before. If you go over to DeFi Llama, a lot of the projects on, on uh, Cosmos have a lot of total value locked into them, including um, the Terras. Um, they have some other ones. I'm forgetting the main one. Um, Kronos, Kronos, that's it. The Crow, Crow's on there. Um, of course, also their own blockchain. Um, Osmosis, which people are really, you know, people like a lot. Um, Secret, tons of different, different ones there. But um, yeah, and just remember this: this is a Ethereum high guy saying that. So if he's saying that about Cosmos, um, he might know something that J.P. Morgan knows that they like about Cosmos. So just saying. Oh, everything is freezing up right now. Let me close some more stuff. And oh, by the way, like I was showing you guys before, Quant is a partner of um, Alliance Block. If you can go down here, a lot of the people that we mentioned that were going to be really great uh, 
in the banking sector are actually partners of Alliance Block. So we know that they're actually going to be in on it because they're partners with everybody we mentioned. Um, you can see Quant there. We go down here. Um, Hedera is on this list somewhere. I must have just passed them up. Flare, uh, Hedera, Panaguin, which uh, Bird Dog just mentioned. Energy Web Token again making the appearance where we were talking about them. Um, so yeah, so they they're they're teamed with a lot of the guys that we were just talking about in the banking sector. And again, they want to do somewhat similar to Quant. They're probably going to help Quant with this um, seamlessly bring together DeFi and traditional finance. So let's go back over here. I have a weird theory that XRP is the biggest sigh up in crypto. No nah, man, they're they're really they're really out here, dude. XRP's really out here doing stuff like 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 we just did it yesterday. Let's see, uh XRP uh central banks. Oh, by the way, um Bitmark just relisted them. Um, XRP is working with so many central banks. It's it's insane. Um, and they're working with so many banks. Like, okay, so these this this one is just even just a small list of banks. Banks that are currently using their technology. Let's just look here. Accenture. Um, Banco uh, BBVA. Um, And this is this is like an old list because I know I know there are way more now. Um, Deloitte, Royal Bank of Canada, Santander. Um, I think Bank of America is actually using them too. Um, Star One. There's so many banks, dude. Shanghai, like Masuo. There's just so many banks. There's so many banks. Um, let's see. I'm pretty sure that Bank of America is using them. Oh, and this is also one. Bank of Italy, Central Bank, is choosing Algorand. But that's a different subject. Uh, Bank of America and Ripple. They got banks in UAE that use them. Um, Australia, there's it's just so many. To me, it doesn't. I mean, if, if it's a psyop, that's a lot of different banks to be having a psyop on the man. Um, Bank of America to, to partner with Ripple for ODL services after lawsuit finishes. Brad Gearinghouse says Bank of America is a huge partner of Ripple and ready to gain a, a competitive advantage. Bank of America execs confirm partnership with Ripple. Um, XRP and UAE. UAE. It's like way too many banks, dude, that, that have a partnership with them for them to be like a PSYOP. Ripple partners with UAE Bank for cross-border payments. Um, Ripple announces partnership with MoneyGram 
So Ripple and MoneyGram and Stellar and MoneyGram, huh? Um, Ripple bullish on Mana expansion. And like, there's just, there's just too much, too much Ripple partnerships to even go over all of it right now. <laughs> um, but th that's just, just a, a few. Might not be a good replacement. Might be good as a replacement for Swift, but I'm more interested in what the public be using dinner. Okay, we got that one. And are you being, are we being Mercury retrograded right now? Uh, v Chain Thor, um, Zill. Oh, V Chain Thor and Zill, you know what? I just fit, I, I switched most of my focus to the bank coins, and I hate to say that because it's like, they're probably working with the World Economic Forum, but um, I switched most of my, my focus over to those guys because I know like the banks are having trouble and they need the liquidity, so they might use those as replacements. That's that's why I'm um, I'm kind of on those guys. Um, what's up, Moose Ali? Good evening. What do you think about Stronghold, aka S H? Okay, is that a coin? Because I know it's also like a Bitcoin miner. Let me see. Okay, stronghold token. Okay. I'm going to have to check these guys out. I haven't uh, done any research on these guys before. Okay, pretty big supply at a hundred million. At a, no, I'm sorry, at a hundred billion. Um, in comparison, uh, XRP, Hedera, XRP, Hedera, and Stellar are around fifty billion. So this is like double that and they're trying to be currency so uh, let's see I just want to kind of see the price history here it's not uh okay oh um, okay it was as high as three cents now down in this area. Okay, I'll have to do some research on these guys. Let's see. Two fifty is your ten year. Okay, I was saying uh, two hundred. Actually, my ten year, my ten year is actually a million. Um, Two fifty is my um, bullish case for this year, for twenty twenty like six ish, because um, like they tri it triples, it seems to triple every every bull cycle. So two fifty is the bullish case for the end of this bull cycle, and. Um, the end for the bull cycle after that, which is 2028, 20, would be uh, 750. And then after that, if it doesn't make it there in 2028, 20, I would say a million and 2032. 
And let me write down the strong code. I have to do a little research on that one. All right, um, I guess that's it, guys. Um, thank you guys for coming. Or, oh, we got some more questions. Many banks investing in R3. Yes, R3 is yes. R3 is huge. Uh, Ripple has connections to those guys, too. Um, yes, R3 is so huge. Uh, Cordal R3 is huge. Uh, so does um, Energy Web Token, by the way. Um, Energy Web Token has connections to R3 as well. Maybe 20 years. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Um, I think also, um, well, you gotta, you gotta question the source here, but I think Kathy Wood said something about Kathy, I'm spelling Katie, aren't I? Kathy Wood, Bitcoin, million dollars. I think she said 2035. I'm saying 2032, so it's... I didn't know that she said that, but now that you say it, I think that's what she said. Um, I think she said 35. Let me see. By 2030, okay. So to me, I'm, I really think, yeah, 2032, 2030, like right in that range. A million dollars, yep. So I, I didn't know that when I made, uh, made the, the um, prediction. But uh, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm thinking this at too. Um, where is the line? What's up, HBCU maker? Oh, she, she said uh, 500. Yep, DT, the DCCC2. Yeah, it's sad. I wish that people could get access to R3 some way, but like the people really can't get access to R3. Um, there are different people that work with it, like Energy Web Token, Ripple. Um, I think XDC works with them too, but. We normies can't get any access to them. Ah, it closed on me. Didn't mean to do that. Let's go history. Bam, there it is. The ARK Invest uh, founder and CEO said in an interview with Bloomberg that she's sticking to her big point price target of one million by 2030. So I, I kind of feel, Kathy, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Um, 2032, 2030. Around there, hopefully. I 
I'm trying to get, I'm trying to be, yeah, yeah, man. Too many people selling it for it to get that high. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, uh, I know um, Bitcoin Zay and uh, King, I think they think a lot um, that a lot of this Bitcoin that people say that they have on exchanges are is actually not real, just fake. So I, um, Sam Bankman Free kind of showed us that because he actually held no Bitcoin because he couldn't manipulate it. So some of this Bitcoin out on these exchanges might be not, you know, might not be, you know, not, not, might not be real. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think I think we settle into like a really good four year pattern with it. And um, yeah, if, if you play it, if you play it right, you, you can really have some nice nice happenings here and um yeah yeah uh, but i agree with king and uh zay i think a lot of this, this coin out here might be the bitcoin out here might be fake that's why it's like you know definitely you're like self-custody guys if you can <laughs> you'll keep an eye out for it i feel it that's cool, man. Living near Kathy Wood. That's awesome, man. That's really awesome. I love it, dude. I, I like I like Kathy Wood. She's 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 uh she's cool. Uh did you hear? No, I did not hear that theory on Satoshi. Please, please tell me. Let me see who this is. Shrake kills. Let's see. Hope I spelled it right. Theory on Satoshi. Sat. Sat. I can't spell save my life, y'all. Okay. Oh, wow, really? That's interesting. That's interesting. Wow. <laughs> well, Jimmy Valley, the guy I was telling you about with um, XRP, he was saying like he really thinks that the CIA and people know who, like, like these big people know who Satoshi is. Or, um, and he thinks that Satoshi might be like three or four people and they kind of know who it is, but they're not going to tell us. But, um, like all these big investors, like Michael Saylor and all of that, they know, they know who they, they might know who Satoshi is since they're putting so much money into it. But I don't know. It's a good question. That's a good question. I wish I had finding please. Wow. Wow. Well, isn't that bad if he decrypted it? Paul LaRue, LaRue. Interesting. Isn't that bad, though, if he really decrypted it, though?
Interesting. I'm gonna have to go down that rabbit hole and really, uh, really figure that out. I I do think the CIA and those people like know who Satoshi is. I really think they know. Um, interesting. That's really interesting. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I'll have to check that out. That's very interesting. That's, you know, I like this conspiracy, so I'll go down that rabbit hole just to see what's going on there, which reminds me, guys, definitely come over here and check me out on Rockfin. Uh, I think the next time I go live, I'm going to try to dual stream to Rockfin. That hasn't been working the last couple times that I've done it, but um, I'm going to try it one more time because I think I know what the issue might be now. Um, but yeah, guys, definitely come over here and check me out on Rockfin. We do some more deep diving on kind of like esoteric, um, quote unquote, occult stuff over here. Um, and I definitely would suggest coming over and checking out some people over here. Um, I know they said they were supposed to be doing a thing where you could... Um, like individual creators could say like how much they wanted to charge people for premium and if they do have that as an option i'll let you guys know but for right now if you wanted everyone's premium all you had to do is pay like um 15 bucks a month and you get like sam tripoli's premium a whole bunch of other people's premium eddie bravo like big names in the quote unquote conspiracy um space but um yeah, we got some nice, really nice stuff over here. Real, you think there's any chance AI could be used to have Bitcoin? I just can't help thinking there's someone trying to as we speak uh, to be the first. Um, as far as we know, no one's done it with AI. Um, Quantum AI is supposed to, like quantum is supposed to be able to be able to have enough computing power to hack crypto, um, which is why Hedera, or not Hedera, um, Algorand, they're actually not quantum hackable. So that is going to be a big thing coming up with the advent of quantum computers to not be quantum hackable. So Algorand's already achieved this. Um, I think Monero has too because the FBI and different people have been trying to crack Monero for a bit. But um, Pioneering Falcon post-quantum technology. Algorand has already selected Falcon as his choice to provide quantum security. So they, they're already set. Algorand's already set. They're not quantumly hackable. Um, but yeah, GT, that is a concern for crypto coming up. Uh, not as much of a concern right now where I would like stay away from Bitcoin or stay away from uh, crypto altogether. But it is, it is something because most, I mean, like just to cool a quantum system uh, right now, like only... <laughs> Only like the governments can really cool quantum quantum systems at this point, um, but um, yeah, that 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 is going to be a concern uh, coming up here in the future. Oh yeah, that that is something that a lot of people question too. Mainly, like a lot of people think that they might they might have been a part of it. Some people blame uh, the, um, the uh, CIA. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I I want to like, cause there's a whole esoteric, whole like um, 
way of looking at it and in that like um bitcoins like the sun and um i'm only just getting into the esoteric stuff a little bit um and bitcoin has to do a lot with um kind of like a saturny like worship um and i kind of i kind of delve into saturn worship a little bit on uh rockfin so there's a whole like there's a whole breakdown to that part of it um but yeah i i i i really do think they know the cia uh that they know who who it is and um they kind of know like okay like okay to kind of watch that person because a lot of really big companies have stuff into bitcoin and they they know because if that wallet dumped they would be in some big trouble for their businesses so i think i think they know who it is and they and he's under you know surveillance and he probably he probably knows he can't dump certain things like that Yeah, guys, this has been fun. Maybe uh, I'll have to continue to do these on Tuesday nights if you guys are free on Tuesdays. Um, let me know in um, the comments um, if you guys are free on Tuesdays. Seems like a lot of you guys are free on Tuesdays. We'll continue to do these on Tuesdays. Um, so thanks so much, guys, for coming out. I really appreciate it, especially y'all that made it to the end and y'all who's grabbing the recording. Um, thank you guys so much. Have a good one, guys. Peace.